Right, I'm showing today how to adjust the valves on this mower here. It has a Kohler engine. First thing we need to do is to um, take the hood off so that we have access to everything. And in order to do that, we have to disconnect the wiring for the headlights in there. Look at that. A little focus would be great. There we go. And so we need to disconnect that in order to get the hood off. And once that is uh, disconnected, you just pull the hood up and then it's gone. Right. Can I go over there? Let me see. So um, here we go. Pull it off like this. Jeez. If you need it off easy, it won't be easy. There it goes. Look at that. And then that goes to the side and then we have access to the font. We can see the valve cover here with a bunch of screws all the way around, but the motor cover, the engine cover, is covering up the screws. So we have to take that off first. You know, for uh, this step you better get your, your toolkit ready. You can see I do a fast forward on this whole thing because there's only four screws you have to remove. And um, that's very easy, so everybody can do that. The four screws will hold this thing in place. Um, take them off, take the cover off, so that we can get access to the motor and uh, remember where you put those screws. Uh, when you put this thing back together, you need them again. And then the next step is to remove all the screws from the valve cover, one after another. You take this hose off, you can just pull that off. Put it here to the side, and then uh, remove all the screws. Again, for this part I'm going to fast forward, because this is not very exciting to take this cover off. Just be aware of there is oil in there a little bit. It will leak out, like a tablespoonful maybe in there. And um, yeah, so have something underneath. Otherwise it will drip on the exhaust. And you try to avoid that kind of. So I'm taking the last bolt off and put this underneath so if there's some oil it can drip in there. And now we can see the old gasket we need to remove. And uh, no, let me do that quick. Oh, um, there's one more thing, um, important basically. You need to take the ignition wire off because this thing is self-igniting here. If you spin the flywheel then it might ignite. So you want to take that off because we have to turn the flywheel in a way that the ignition lines up here. You know, up there the ignition magnet and the coil itself, when uh, that comes together at this spot here, you will see that both rockers are loose, and that's the point where we want to adjust them. Yeah, let me take this thing off. I um, hope it doesn't stick too much. In this case, it looks good. And um, there is several methods how you can clean this. I show that later. It comes up the question where is the intake and where is the exhaust valve. So on the left side here there is exhaust. You see the exhaust pipe there. So then you know that side is the exhaust valve. And here on the right side we have the intake, the carburetor. And that is then the intake valve. So very easy to find and recognize. Let's look again at the close-up a little more. So the exhaust pipe here on the left, that's where the exhaust valve is, and the intake on the right where the carburetor is. And they do have two different uh, settings or adjustments. So this is the tool you need here. 
and you can see 0 0.05 and 0 0.07 those are the two you select from a bunch uh, the two where this has to be set to and uh, the exhaust usually has a, a, a wider gap because the exhaust valve gets hotter so it extends longer so in a hot engine there will be no gap that's the goal here you measure on the cold engine the gap, and when it's hot, there is no gap. So this is way too loose. Now, I can try a bunch of settings. This thing has 200 hours, and I can try to measure what our values are here to see uh, how far it went off. But um, I don't want to do this in this video to make dot the video not too long. Um, I'm just setting this to the correct ones. So you have the correct uh, thing ready here, the correct size of tape ready. Then there's a Torx 15 inside and an M10. Okay, so we loosen this thing and then we can turn the nut to the right to make it tighter. So go in there with that. Tighten it up until you cannot push it anymore, but still pull it. That's how it has to be. And once you have that setting, then you tighten the Torx T15 again in the center. You might need to practice a little bit to hold all those tools and put it in there. And uh, like that. So I'll tighten that one. And then you check if with the <coughs> tape again here if it's good or not. Can't push in, but you can pull out. Yeah. The, this is too loose, see? If you're in there, you can go back and forth without resistance, so you have to do it again. Alright, so you put your gauge in there. You can not push, but you can pull, and that's perfect. Now we have to do the same thing on the exhaust valve with the 0 0.07 gauge. It goes in there. And uh, this thing was way too loose, so I need the same toolkit here. First, loosen up the Torx. Tight on there. And then we go here. So just in case you have this question, um, so what if you don't tighten that nut good enough? Then it will loosen while you're driving this thing. And um, what can happen? So it gets more and more loose. You will hear more and more noise from the engine and you will lose engine power a lot. So you will notice when this thing loosens up and uh, falls off. It won't fall off because you will notice before. Had Before it falls off, you will notice this. And um, because of the noise the engine makes. If that happens, you just have to open it again and tighten it up again and tighten it a little more. So here we see it goes in and out easy. To wiggle it around a little bit, you get it really in between valve and rocker. There. So I go back and forth, easy, so this should be a little tighter. I usually use a razor blade to clean the area where we want the casket to fit. Um, it's a one-time use and then I throw it out, I don't need big tools for this. Um, the old uh, thing was not very much, very tight on here, so it's no big deal, it was leaking oil onto the exhaust pipe, that's a bad thing, but yeah. For the new gasket I used this ultra black stuff um, to glue it on and then ensure there will be no leakage. So I'm gonna prepare the gasket on one side and then here on the cylinder head I put some of the stuff.
Yeah, and I want this on there very thin. So I put a rope around it and then like wipe it there with my finger, like make an even. Well, uh, because we don't want too much of the stuff going into the engine and blocking the. <coughs> blocking the oil canals in there. Make sure it has an oil filter and stuff, but. So we want little stuff in there. Not too much, right? So the. I think what's in there comes off. I think this is already really very plenty what I put on here. And you do the same on the uh, valve cover, and then uh, we put this thing together. Alright, so valve cover goes on, and then you have the bolts to put those bolts in. Um, I am on purpose going over here to the upper right first, because there was um, a change in the design because it's leaking oil uh, all the time there is an extra part what they put on there now this is here on the bottom it's like an, an extra piece of metal on there what pushes the whole thing down more evenly that's new so I'm gonna put that on that should, should help uh, with uh, the oil leakage too. And then when you tighten the bolts, don't over tighten uh, because you will squish this cork uh, gasket in there. So you can see it when you look in behind there, you can see how you squish it. So it's not, it's not very, very tight those screws. Yeah, be careful with it, don't do too much. Yeah, and then we want to clean this thing up. So now I have a new valve cover in my case because there was a, a mechanical change where they put the new valve cover on. Here, yeah, that hose goes back in. Um, that's why mine looks so new now. Um, it's a new valve cover because they have what you see on the bottom here, this extra piece there to hold it, to hold the valve cover in shape, especially in the lower area there. And um, yeah, you clean it, you put the ignition uh, back on the spark plug, and then um, we run it quick to listen for noise. But you have to be aware of since the engine cover is not on there, what is the air duct for this air cooled engine? Uh, you cannot run this thing for long without that plastic cover on top. If you don't put that on, the engine will overheat. And while you add it, check your oil, if you have enough in there. So in my case, I'm low, I need to refill it a little bit. And uh, then I'm going to start this thing for a second to see how it runs. Um, also, when you see smoke now, sure, so we are like playing around with oil. There was oil leaking into the exhaust. Yeah, we are going to uh, put the cover back on, and uh, for that we need those four screws again with an M8 nut in this case. Put four of them on, tighten them, and then after that happens you can have the engine run for how long you want. Um, but this cover is very important to direct the air from the fan to the cylinder. You do not want to overheat this thing.
Yeah, right, and then the last step is to put the hood back on. That is uh, an easy thing to do. Just don't forget to reconnect the uh, wiring for the headlight. Alright, so there we are. Then we can stop this thing and listen to the listen to this one here. Can you listen careful how smooth it runs in slow motion? You hear that? If there would be something wrong with your valves or stuff you would hear it. It would make a weird noise but this is like a steam engine here. It's like smooth and nice. So when you're done, you um, just look for like oil leaks and anything. And uh, here this thing looks great. Look at that. There's not one drop or anything. You'll see it smoking if you made a mistake there. There's no question about that. 